So in the second part of this unit, um, we're going to move on and talk about um, actually generating errors um, within your code, sort of in a controlled way. So Python gives you this raise keyword that allows you to manually generate an exception. Um, but then of course you might well say, why on earth would you want to go and do that? Why would you, you think gen generating an exception was a, was a good thing to go and do in your code? So one reason you might be going to do this is to signal to the rest of the program that there was a problem with some kind of invalid input. Um, so then um, the, they would let your program itself detect that exception. So there's always a temptation um, when you're writing code to go and um, make your program give up and quit immediately if it sees an invalid input. So in computing one, you've probably been introduced to sys.exit, which is the way of aborting out of a program. Actually, this is not always a good thing to go and do because um, you're basically saying, I'm not going to give the whatever program called my code even the possibility of a chance of, of dealing with the, with the problem itself. So if you're writing, say, a function that's doing one calculation that is going to be used by part of a larger program, that maybe you've written or maybe somebody else has written, um, then you don't know within that function whether or not actually quitting the program um, kind of hard and fast, aborting it, might have, is the right thing to go and do or whether it's not. Um, so it's always a good idea not to go and do sys.exit, but instead to try and um, create an, an exception with rays that might give the rest of your code or the user some clue as to what's happening. So here's how you use it. So um, we're back to the, the um, same uh, sort of problem. But in this case, what we've done is we've decided that rather than having a zero division error when the user enters a zero, we want to create a different error. So what happens here is we say um, the same example. We're trying to um, uh, enter an integer. And then we say, well, if, n, if the integer x is equal to zero, um, then rather than letting it generate a, a runtime, rather than letting it generate a zero division error uh, in the uh, fourth line of the try block there, we're going to raise a runtime error first. Um, so then you can see when we run it, uh, what happens is when you put in zero, we detect that zero with the if statement, and then the raise causes it to generate a runtime error. So this is a bit of a trivial example, but you could imagine that maybe you could give a more helpful error message. So by using raise, you can actually determine what error message is going to be given uh, to the user. And so in this example, rather than simply saying math domain error um, or a division by zero error or whatever, I'm giving it actually a slightly more helpful error message. So another common use to uh, using raise is to change the uh, error message that's being generated by the code. Um, so um, here in this example, um, we have decided that no matter what goes wrong with this code, we're going to raise a runtime error, um, uh, irrespective of anything else that happens. So again, what you see happening here is that um, we uh, generate, um, uh, so I have a function that's called process OK, which is going to just generate a, a division by zero error. So I try calling that function. Um, that function generates an exception. It's a zero division um, exception. So that goes through to the accept block. And then I create a raise runtime error. So what the actual message at the end of all of that comes out with is one that said I had a runtime error rather than any other sort of error. So this is an example of where we have used raise uh, inside the accept block to change which type of error we're generating and to give it a better error message. Um, so as I said, here, here we always end up with a runtime error that uh, comes about no matter what other, other errors might have happened. So for the third part of this um, uh, unit, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, customizing your own exceptions. So we talked when we were talking about raising about how you could change um, the type of error by catching in an in a accept clause, say a value error or a type error, and instead returning a runtime error. 
Um, so this is great, and Python has lots of different exceptions that can um, uh, be different, that can mean different things. Um, but actually, one of the nice things you can go and do is you can define your own type of exception, um, and then have your code raise your own custom exceptions. And that can be a useful way of signaling um, to surrounding parts of your code that some special um, exception or unexpected event has happened. So this little part is now making use of some more advanced programming uh, concepts um, that are going to be covered in the object-orientated uh, programming tutorial. So um, to make your own type of exception, um, you probably want a basic on uh, an existing type of an exception. So um, decide whether what you've got is some kind of special type of value error or some special type of runtime error um, or something else. So in this particular example, I'm going to show how to make a custom runtime error. So we're introducing this new class keyword, um, and I've given it the name student error, and then in brackets I put the type of um, error that I'm basing it on, and in this case a runtime error. Um, and then um, you have a colon, and then inside the block after that, it's customary to go and put some kind of documentation string just to go and say, um, what's this uh, what this particular um, type of exception is all about um, and then in this particular example I've just redefined the um, uh, method that's going to be used or the, the function that's going to be used um, to go and um, when, when you ask say print out the value of this exception um, so here's how we could use it um, so in this case, what I'm doing is got the same code. Then I've got my still got my process OK function, which is going to produce a zero division error. I know because I fixed it to do that. Uh, and then inside the accept um, clause, rather than raising a runtime error, I'm now raising a student error. And so when we run this code, you see at the end of the day, it finishes up saying it's got a student error um, that's come by. So that's just a very simple example of using. Um, a way of, of customizing your own error messages, uh, your own exceptions, um, which can be a handy way of signaling to other parts of the program uh, when something that is special to your code has happened. Um, in generally speaking, in most situations, it's perfectly fine just to use the built-in uh, Python exceptions. Um, so in this case, this last part of this tutorial is going a little bit beyond the the, the examinable scope of this module, but it's also um, if you're looking at other people's code, you might well see that there are non-standard errors um, being uh, tested for um, or even being raised, and this is basically what's going on with them. Um, so if you want to go and dig even deeper into your program, then there's a, a module called Traceback. Um, and this, again, is well beyond the scope of this course. But just to give you a flavor of what you can do with it, um, when you import the Traceback, module, you can um, also import uh, from sys module um, a thing called last trace back, and then you can get it to print out the last error that um, happened. So in this case, you can see that the last error that happened was me raising a student error. Um, and trace back uh, module is what's being used when you do hit a, a bug in, in the Python console, and it gives you a big long listing of all the things that went wrong in your program from the start of your program through to the, the thing that actually caused the, the, the program to stop. So if you look at the um, debugging videos where I talk about the exception handling, then the sort of big long, well, I'll talk about the re reading the error messages, then those big long error messages are coming basically from the traceback module. So in summary, um, in this unit we've uh, covered exception handling. Um, so basic catching of errors, um, handling different errors differently, triggering errors deliberately with the raise, and also creating custom errors.